this tutorial, we will cover the reports function in the airborne line of particle counters from Lighthouse Worldwide Solutions. To get started, press the Reports button at the bottom right corner of the screen. There are three types of reports listed at the top of the screen. Federal Standard 209E, ISO 14644-1, and EUGMP. Press the button for the type of the report you want to run. To set the parameters for the report, press the Setups button in the bottom right corner of the screen. The setup parameters will change depending on which report type was chosen. For the ISO 14644-1 report, the setup parameters are Class, Area, Status, Flow, Particle, Sample, Setting, and Location. For the ISO 14644-1 report, press the Class button to select the ISO class cleanroom of the room you want to run the report on. Then, press the Back button. Press the Area button to set the area. First, select the units to enter the room area in, either square feet or square meters. Next, use the keypad on the right side of the screen to enter the area of the room you are running the report for. If you make a mistake or wish to change your entry, press the Erase button to erase the last character entered and re-enter the value. The new value will display in the right corner above the on-screen keypad. When you're finished, press the Enter button. The new value will display in the top left corner. Once you have successfully set the area, press the Back button to return to the Report Setup screen. To set the room status the cleaner was in while the samples were recorded, press the Status button. Select the appropriate cleanroom status. When you're finished, press the Back button. When you're taking samples to classify the room, you must specify whether the airflow in the room is unidirectional or non-unidirectional. To set the type of airflow, press the Flow button. Select either unidirectional or non-unidirectional flow. When you're finished, press the Back button. The buttons on the right side of the Report Settings screen specify how the sample will be recorded for the report. Note, however, that there are certain settings that are particularly important when running a report. The number of cycles and the volume of air in each sample may be set via the Sample button. It is not necessary to run multiple cycles when running a report. Usually, the Cycles field should be set to 1. Note that you should not change the sample time or the sample volume. Each of the cleanroom standards has specific requirements about the minimum volume of air that must be sampled in each location. These minimum volumes are displayed on the main report screen. As soon as you enable the report, the sample time will automatically be set to the minimum sample time required for the report, based on the particle sizes you have selected to sample. Allowing the particle counter to set the sample time will ensure the data collected meets the requirements of the selected cleanroom standard. To continue setting up the report, press the Setup button again. The Calculating mode may be set via the Settings button. All the supported cleanroom standards require the counts to be collected in cumulative mode. Selecting raw or normalized counts or selecting display units of cubic feet or cubic meters changes how the particle counts are displayed but does not change the validity of the report. However, to avoid confusion, select cubic feet for the display units when running the federal standard report and select cubic meters for the display units when running ISO 14644-1 or the EUGMP report. When you've finished selecting the settings, press the Back button. In all but the smallest rooms, most cleanroom standards require that you samples be taken at multiple locations within the room. To select which sample locations to use for the report, press the Locations button. Two lists are displayed. The locations shown in the list on the right will be used in the report. All other locations shown in the list on the left will not be used in the report. To include a new location in the report, select the desired location in the list on the left and press the Add button at the bottom of the screen. To remove a location from the report, select the location in the list on the right and press the Delete button. When you have finished selecting the locations, press the Back button. When you have finished selecting the report parameters, you can either save the settings in a recipe or return to the Report Setup screen. 
To save the settings as a recipe, press the Save button. For instructions on how to save a recipe, please see the video on Lighthouse Recipes. To return to the Report Setup screen, press the Back button. In the Report Setup screen, the Report button in the bottom left of the screen displays whether or not the reports are enabled. In the Report screen, the Report button in the top left corner of the screen displays whether or not reports are enabled. If the Reports button displays a red X, reports are not enabled, and data recorded by the instrument will not be used for a report. If the Report button displays a green check mark, reports are enabled and any data collected by the instrument will be used for the report. Once all the report settings have been set, enable reports by pressing the Reports button in the top left corner of the screen until the button changes from a red X to a green check mark. After you have enabled the reports, press the main button to return to the main screen. Notice that when the reports are enabled, the main screen no longer shows temperature and humidity. Instead, the box below the time and date displays the name of the report being run. Below the name of the report being run, the instrument displays the number of samples that have been taken and the number of samples required to complete the report. Before starting the report, walk to the first sample location and set the sample locations on the instrument by pressing the locations button which shows four arrows facing up, down, left, and right. To start running the report, press the start button. The instrument will sample at the current location until the sample is complete. Once the instrument has completed the sample, it will prompt you to ask if you want to move to the next location in the locations list. If you wish to take the next sample, at the location it's prompting you for, press the Yes button. The instrument will automatically change the selected location for you. Walk to the selected location, and when you're ready to begin the next sample, press the Start button. Once the instrument has completed the sample, it will again prompt you, asking if you want to move to the next location in the list. If you wish to take the next sample at a different location than the one it is prompting you for, press the No button. You must now manually select the next location by pressing the Locations button, which is the button with the four yellow arrows pointing in different directions at the top center of the screen. Select the next location you want to sample and press the Main button to return to the main screen. Move to the selected location, and when you're ready to begin the next sample, press the Start button. Once the instrument has completed the last sample needed for the report, it will display a pop-up message notifying you that the sample is complete and prompting you whether or not to disable reports. If you plan to run another report after this one, press the No button. Otherwise, press the Yes button. For printing, press the Reports button to return to the report screen, and then press the Range button. The data displayed will be the last sample taken. The upper left corner of the screen displays the current record number. To print the report, first scroll down to the first sample taken for the report by pressing the up arrow and down arrow buttons on the left side of the screen. Make sure the record number displayed in the upper left hand corner is correct, then press the range button. Enter the number of samples taken in the report, then press the enter button. When you press the Enter button, the report will print to the printer. The top portion of the printout displays the selected report information about the instrument and information about the area sampled. The printout then displays each particle size sampled and information about that sample size, including the report requirements, sample values, and statistics for the report. Press the Feed button on the printer to advance the paper to show the bottom of the printout. The bottom of the printout displays whether the room successfully met cleanroom classification chosen for the report. This concludes our training video on how to use the reports function in the Lighthouse line of airborne particle counters. For more information on Lighthouse products, please go to www.golighthouse.com.